Kwame Alexander is a poet, educator, and New York Times bestselling author of 28 books, including his newest wow. title, Swing, which follows the journey of two best friends, Noah and Walt, as they navigate high school, love, friendship, and sacrifice. Please help us welcome New York Times bestselling author, Kwame Alexander. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Lucas, very nice to meet you. Hey. How are you? You can walk out. Hello, Thanks for joining us. How are you, us. Yeah, How you doing? Joining us. Welcome, Thanks welcome. for having me. Um, you have to ignore the smell of meatballs we've been enjoying. I'm starving, yeah. so I'm just in time. There's a fork, dig in. fork, actually, if you want to dig in. Uh, first, let me hand me that book really quick. Sure, sure. How cool is this to see this book? Like, what has the journey been like to get here? It's 28, book number 28. Yeah. yeah. So it's never, you know, boring. It's always exciting. It feels like the first one. So, does um, it? yeah, it does. It doesn't feel like 28. <laughs> no, it doesn't, but it's been a, a long journey. I'm a, I'm a 28 year overnight success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, but I've really enjoyed it. And this is my uh, most challenging book that I wrote and probably my, my most favorite. And why is it the most challenging? Um, I wrote it with a partner, Mary Rand Hess. Oh. And so we were in two different places. And so just, you know, the logistics of us writing together, but also the subject matter, you know, really wanting to write a book about love. Um, that had some, you know, social justice, you know, themes throughout it, especially with what we're dealing with right now. So it was, it was kind of tough. Yeah. And uh, w the one thing I love about the book is it's written in kind of poetry form, right. which for me made it really easy and fun to read. Exactly. Because you feel like you don't, you're not biting off too much. You can really take right. it piece at a piece. It goes pretty fast. I've been writing poetry since I was 12 years old. It's, it's how I learned how to write. My first poem was from my mother on Mother's Day. Um, it went, uh, Dear Mommy, I Hate Mother's Day. Oh. <laughs> because wow. in my heart, every day is Mother's Aww. Day, and I love you, Dear Mommy. Oh, wow. That was horrible, but she loved it. I'm she impressed. <laughs> that is the first yeah. poem I wrote. It's right? Yeah. yeah, that's got yeah. layers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been writing since I was 12, and, uh, and I love the immediacy of poetry. I love how it packs so much you know, power into a very few words. Mm -hmm. And it, like you said, it builds confidence in the reader. You get through this one poem, you finish the chapter, especially yeah. with kids who don't necessarily like to read. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you are using poetry to empower young people. And so is that something you always set out to do? Or did you just kind of fall into that because you were already doing poetry? Somewhere? Yeah, um, I think sometimes the world is not such a beautiful place. Mm. And, and I think that poetry is a way for kids to find their voice, for them to lift their voice. Um, I had a really cool teacher in college named Nikki Giovanni. <laughs> and uh, she's an activist poet, and she taught me a lot about sort of the responsibility that we have as writers to help kids imagine a better world, and that's what I love to do. Wait, oh, you really worked that. with Nikki Giovanni? Or For three years. Read... Oh, wow. She was my professor. That's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. was, it was it, at the time it wasn't so amazing because she was a hard teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we've become friends, and it's a 20-year friendship, and I've learned a great deal from her. It's wow. amazing. Yeah. So how would you say Swing compares to your other books? Um, Swing is probably the book that has the most interesting twist. Mm. Like the last, it's about a 400 page book. The last 20 pages or so, so when you finish it, don't tell anyone. <laughs> You're gonna wanna tell people, <laughs> but don't. Okay. Um, and so writing that twist was a risk because uh, it sort of veers off and a lot of people have said, well man, the ending is so random. It's so just out of nowhere. And that's because life is out of nowhere. Mm. Life is random, and I wanted to sort of mirror that. Yeah, I love that. Especially yeah. at this age of the characters, life is so sort of, you don't know what's gonna happen. Right, so. right. They're, um, they're 17, yeah. they're juniors, they're trying to be cool. You know, I can relate to that. I didn't get cool till very recently. <laughs> but in high school, I wanted to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to write about this, uh, this character who's trying to find his place in the world, who's trying to find his cool, and what happens when he finds it and the world doesn't recognize it. Yeah. So your 28th book, like, what's the process of like, mapping out a book, and like, especially doing that with another author? You want all my trade secrets? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. I think I saw you in an <laughs> elevator earlier. Today? <laughs> <laughs> <He's> like, oh. <laughs> I got it. You got I think, it? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I got it. You were staring directly at it. Yeah. Weird. Didn't, you didn't yeah. turn around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't. Um, the process. I don't remember the joke. <laughs> I usually, you know, I wrote, uh, I wrote a few of my novels in a place you may be familiar with. It's called Panera Bread. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I would go there every day and write for five hours after I took my kid to school. And essentially, the first couple of hours is um, checking social media and procrastinating and listening to music. Yeah. And eventually it sort of kicks in, dude, you got to write. <laughs> and you sit in that chair, I, called it, I call it BIC, butt in chair. You got to write. 
And so I sat there, and maybe after a couple hours, I would actually get into the writing of it. And really, it's just a matter of getting it out. Um, usually, the first draft is kind of whack. Mm. Um, and eventually, you'll make it to the second and third draft, where you can really sort of finesse it and make it something that is meaningful, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. You've won numerous awards, including, I want to say, three NAACP Image Award nominations and the 2017 inaugural Pat Conroy Legacy Award. So you've been recognized a ton for your work. Right. When you set out to write a book, I don't want to ask you set out to go win awards, but <laughs> you set out to kind of be recognized and to make a dent in our society to do something that kind of it would be recognized by these organizations for... You know, it's a good question. I mean, certainly we all want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. You know, who doesn't want to win an award? Uh, the motivation is really to write a good book. Right. To write a good book that hopefully some young person is going to pick up and be impacted by in some meaningful way. That's exciting. Like, I really believe that I have a responsibility to help people imagine a better world. And I think through the pages of a book are the tools that you can do that. Right. So that's where it comes from. The award's great. If I get them, you know, I'm happy. You know, my wife's happy, my kid's happy, um, but that's not really the motivation for, for why we do it. Yeah. And speaking of young people, you just announced a partnership with Follett, which is the largest provider of educational materials and technology solutions to pre-K through 12 for a literary, literary campaign called All Books for All Kids. Right. Can you tell us about that's that? That's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Take a <laughs> mouthful. But I, I think it's really interesting for people to know because I think it's so cool. Sure. Follett, here's how you all know Follett. Well, you've been to a library. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Never been. <Yeah. laughs> So in Brittany's school, trying out jokes. <laughs> it's working. He laughs. In school libraries, Follett prov provides all the books to school libraries. They're the number one provider to books in school libraries, elementary, middle schools around the world. And so I partnered with them to, to help them launch their Follett book fairs. They're going into schools, providing book fairs for kids where kids can get access to books. They're not just random books, but books that are geared towards making kids engaged mm -hmm. and excited and empowered around literature. And so I'm helping them curate books for their book fairs. It's an all books for all kids campaign because we believe that books are mirrors. Yeah. You see yourself in books and books are windows. Mm -hmm. You see each other in books and we become more human through the literature that we encounter. And so I want to help follow it with that mission. Totally. That's so exciting. Yeah. I'm Sorry. No, I said more people read books, think the world would be a yeah. safer place. Yeah. Or, you remember how exciting it used to be? I was just yes, yeah, when the book fairs. fairs. Oh. Like, the I haven't fairs. felt that excitement since, I think, middle, like, yeah. elementary school. For me, I really school. like butterflies right. in my Yeah, stomach. so much fun having a book fair. Yeah. It really, yeah, it really is. Um, you've also launched a campaign called Hug Life. Right. Um, which is an initiative that works to empower people by starting conversations, right. children. Uh, can you tell us a little, a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the main character in Swing, um, his name is Noah, and he has a best friend named Walt. Walt is all about saying yes to life. He's all about embracing what's possible in life. He thinks everything is great. He thinks every day is going to be a lovely day. He's one of those sort of positive thinking people. He's just like you. <laughs> He's always smiling. And, and Noah is sort of skeptical. You know, he's like, I'm not sure that this life thing is so great. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, he, he's been in love with the same girl for seven years, and he hasn't been able to tell her. And so Walt's thing is, dude, hug life. You get one shot at this. Mm. You've got to let her know. Yeah. And so um, he lets her know through these uh, variety of love poems, um, lips like yours ought to be worshipped. Mm. See, I ain't never been too religious, but you can baptize me anytime. Yes, please. <laughs> right? Yes. So he's... <laughs> but he leaves, these, he leaves these poems anonymously. Mm. So his, it, the idea is how do we um, sort of embrace life, especially when the world is not so beautiful? How do we become more connected with each other? How, how do we become more human um, and really make this world a better place? And I think it comes through hugging life. Yeah. I, like I that. think that's an amazing message. It's I a think thing we should all be doing. Totally. One librarian even got Hug Life, a Hug Life tattoo. She did. If I'm not mistaken. Her name's Alex. Look at that. Wow. Uh, yeah. She hugged it right on her arm. The real <laughs> deal. And you know where that comes from, right? So, Tupac. Mm -hmm. Tupac had a, a, a tattoo across his abdomen. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, hold <laughs> up. Hold up. There you go. Mm -hmm. And it was Thug Life. Right. And so Walt in the, in, in the novel Swing gets a tattoo, and Noah says, dude, if you were going for the Tupac look, you missed terribly and left <laughs> off the T. Uh -huh. He's like, no, dude, I really, I wanted that. I wanted hug life. And so it comes from Tupac, this sort of 
flipping it around. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I love that. I, I think that's, it's like YOLO, you know, it's the same positive message I think we all should embrace. So thank right. you for putting it in a book. That's so fun to read. And thank you for joining us today, Kwame. Thank y'all for having me. Appreciate it.